as the curtain draws on the AT administration of President Mohamed Buhari, reactions have been trading his impact on economy, security, and fight against corruption and the observance of the rule of law. In this special report, Messi Bopo x-rays how far the outgoing administration has fared in the period under review. I, Muhammad Buhari, do solemnly swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria and that I will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So help me God. On May 29, President Mohamed Buhari hands over to another Hemsman, the president-elect Bola Tinubu, to take the wheels of office. As the 16th president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the fifth president since the beginning of the Fourth Republic in 1999. Now, while Nigerians are with the start of fresh dispensation and the grand swell of diverse opinions have shaped conversations about Buhari's eight years administration from 2015 to 2023. Whatever savings we will make from stopping corruption, we will quickly put in farming and mining. Now in 2014, Buhari's campaign promises were premised on three key areas. Fighting insecurity, corruption, and stabilizing the economy. And the aspect of insecurity to the credit of this administration, while Boko Haram has been degraded in the northeastern state, the emergence of bandits in the northwest and killer headsmen in north central and IPOP in the southeast have heightened tension. This current administration did meet um, insecurity on the ground when they assumed office, including the Boko Haram insurgency, which gained momentum between 2014 and 2017. Uh, the administration did make a lot of significant investments in military procurements, and that has assisted uh, the Nigerian military in making some pretty good progress in the Northeast. Um, they're making progress against the insurgency. Now, another area of success for the current administration has been in the Niger Delta militancy and piracy um, off the coast of the Gulf of Guinea. Now, that around 2016, 2017, there was a bit of a resurgence. Um, you know, a lot of groups targeting oil infrastructure, engaging in kidnap for ransom. Now, the situation has improved um, qu quite a bit in the maritime space through uh, government um, interventions, negotiations, the amnesty program. But that area and that region still remains fragile, as you know. In the aspect of tackling corruption, President Buhari's greatest asset, according to some commentators, has been his integrity and incorruptibility. Now, whether this has translated to the diminishing of corruption in Nigeria is a question on the minds of several Nigerians. For some, corruption has blossomed under his nose, and some members of his cabinet were even fingered in a multi-billion corruption saga. The corruption charge against the former Minister of Power, Salim Amin, is one among many, while the anti-agency EFCC and its sister agency, ICPC, have been allowed to operate without hindrance, the pardon granted to former Plateau and Taraba state governors, Darie and Yemer, over embezzlement of government funds, shocked Nigerians and probably mocked the administrator's war against corruption. There are very key, very basic key indexes that one can use to uh, judge whether this administration for the past eight years or so have succeeded against corruption. Key among them is transparency and accountability, particularly in the aspect of income and uh, income and expenditure of governments. Uh, that, that has not uh, played out very well. And uh, for SERAP, for instance, this year alone we've sent out more than 25 freedom of information requests uh, to various ministries, departments and agencies, including the president, uh, the presidency itself. And the, the return rate is less than 9%, while the positive response rate is uh, barely 2%. And that means that Nigerians do not have access 
to critical information about governance. A good case in point is the Abacha loot. We've had like two tranches of Abacha loot returned under this administration. We do not have details of how those funds have been spent. So what are the guarantees that they've not ended up in private pockets? The 100 billion yearly is a contribution to the 1 trillion Naira social housing fund. This same fund will enable us to provide inexpensive mortgages for hundreds of thousands across the country who want to own homes of their own. In spite of the various policy and other social investment programs, Nigeria has continued to be ranked high in poverty as the Multidimensional Poverty Index Report placed 133 million Nigerians below the poverty line. The unemployment rate is at an all-time high of 41%, while inflation rate is over 22%. In addition, the foreign and domestic debts incurred by Buhari's administration have become a huge burden, which has made the Debt Management Office and the Budget Office to cry out over its danger. The uh, MBS just released an inflation report and we have gone a bit further upwards to 22.2% from 22.04 as at the last report. Um, we're trending in the mid-20s on inflation. When this administration started, inflation was single digit. So that, that gives you perspective. So things have gotten significantly worse. And there are people who will tell you that in fact, what the MBS is reporting as inflation is underreported because the basket of um, prices, the components within the basket that they use, um, is no, is, has not been updated and is not comprehensive enough. So inflation is actually far worse than the 22% that has been reported. Um, if you look at our exchange rates, you know, you know, the story is out there for everybody to see. If you look at an overall assessment of the economy, it's difficult to find wins. There have been some measures and policies that the government has put in place towards driving economic development and economic growth. Uh, it will take time for us to see some of those measures um, come to fruition. Uh, takes, you know, there are some master plans, the sugar master plan, um, the national, uh, um, national development master plan, NDMP. Um, they've, they've done a second version recently, I think uh, at the beginning of this year. Um, that is supposed to position, you know, it's similar to the Vision 2020. So they've done a revision of those types of documents. It's an update on the ERGP um, that they came out with after COVID. Those plans are very good documents. If you look at them, they're well thought through. Uh, the basis of the assumptions and all of that that are contained therein are really good. But the implementation has been poor. And this has always been the problem that we've had as a country. President Buhari's legacy continues to generate heated debates among citizens. Infrastructure-wise, I think the government has done its best. It's that they've really tried. Uh, corruption uh, is a journey that still needs to be taken a little bit further. He promised us oh, oh, a lot that he's going to stop uh, Boko Haram. Those uh, Ch Chibos girls, he's going to return them. Did he return any? To me, in economic aspects, to be honest, we are lacking behind. Like, this government really failed us. From here to Kaduna, we are facing a lot of insecurity issues. And there's others that went to, from there down to Benue State. Talking about insecurity, they have, they have not been able to do anything at all, despite the fact that uh, the outgoing gov uh, president is uh, a retired uh, military officer. Yet, they cannot tackle the issue of insecurity. Now, while some pundits believe that the Buhari's administration may not have imparted positively on Nigerians, others are of the opinion that it might just not be fair to write about his legacy just yet, as his policies they believe have a long-term implication on the economy, and it would definitely help to solve the lingering challenges. Messi Eboko for Plus TV Africa. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.